What's going on peeps? Welcome back to another video. Today I thought I'd make a little clip uh, telling you guys you know, what the future plans are for this S2000 because like I said, it's obviously not going to stay standard. There will be a bit of work done to it. But what am I going to do? Where am I going to start? So, uh, now I'm thinking because I think this car looks good but I think it needs a bit of work to make it look better. Uh, for example, I think I'm going to start possibly with wheels first because right now it's got the stockies uh, it's got grip I'm not gonna say it doesn't have grip for the standard power but it's kind of like borderline and I kind of want to prepare the car for some future power mods so I don't want to be doing the engine first and then you know braking traction and shit like that so I want to do everything else first and then the engine works so wheels first I am thinking black wheels on this maybe 17 or 18 inch wheels uh, to get that perfect flush fitment. Hopefully I don't have to roll the guards, but I have a feeling I might have to because the offset on this car is just really high and like it's very hard to put any dish in this car or any kind of concave wheels. It's just very flat. The brakes are really sticking out. So I'm thinking wheels first. Obviously coilovers will have to come straight after if I'm going to lower the car at all. I wasn't been damaging these fenders. Um, what's next? In my opinion, the AP1, the front bar, it's not the best looking compared to the AP2. Like the fact that there is an AP2, it just makes the AP1 look a bit old. And if you guys don't know what an AP2 looks like, I'll show you a photo right now. So that's an AP2. Uh, the only difference really from the outside is the front bar and the headlights. That's pretty much it. That's the only difference from the outside apart from the rear bar. But that's only re it's really cosmetic changes in Australia. So I'm thinking about getting an AP2 front bar and possibly changing the lights. Uh, I like the fact that it's OEM. I don't really feel like doing any body kits on here that are not original. That's just my style. I like to keep a clean style. Uh, I want to make the car look just clean, factory-like. Nothing too outrageous from the looks of it. And then as I was saying in the previous video, the, the sound system in this thing is uh, absolutely shithouse. Like, if that is, uh, that's kind of been nice to me. It is more than shithouse, it's terrible. So I'm definitely going to change that first. I think uh, maybe an Alpine head unit change the speakers because it's only got two speakers so I'll change the front two speakers to something else and possibly get an amp for it because I don't know if the stock head unit will be able to pump out enough power when the wind when the actual roof is down it gets fairly noisy it's fairly noisy in the car overall even when you get the roof up compared to a normal car with uh, you know a hard top it's got a fair bit of noise it doesn't really bother me but you know for a sound system it needs to be a bit louder than the usual so yeah we've got the the front bar it's obviously gonna have to get re-sprayed Possibly the lights, wheels, coilovers, uh, the sound system, the rest of the interior I'm probably going to leave alone like that for now. So yeah, once I get all that other stuff uh, finished, and I'm thinking maybe even doing a brake upgrade. Brakes in this right now are pretty good, but then again the car is not exactly, you know, lightning speed fast. Brakes are definitely something that I'm looking into, so I've got to be uh, very cautious about what wheels I pick. Because of the offset, like I was saying before, uh, big brake kits can't fit on all wheels on the S2000. It has to have a specific offset so there's enough space to clear the calipers and so on. So engine wise, definitely something is going to have to happen here. The most popular choice overseas in America and with most like S2000 owners is a supercharger kit. Uh, it's just been done about a million times. It is very reliable and there are, you know, Look, I'm personally not the biggest fan of supercharger kits compared to turbos. I've always been into turbo cars. I've had my 180SX tuned to like 340 kilowatts. That thing was a monster. And you know, I loved it. It was good fun. Superchargers are linear. They make less torque in a way because they're linear. So there is no spike. You know, a turbocharger will spike at full boost and will make a shitload of power. But that also stresses the shit out of the engine. So. It's, you know, it's, there's no doubt why they say supercharger kits are more reliable because there's never a point to that actual power band where it just jumps up through the roof and stresses the fuck out of the engine. So it's, it's easier for the engine. Uh, 
there's less it's much easier to install that's another thing price wise I'm pretty sure from what I calculate it's about the same if you were trying to get say about 300 kilowatts that's about my aim for the first setup to hit that 300 kilowatt mark and I'm not saying that as just a number uh, from my research and from owning uh, two litre cars before with turbos I think that's a you know a very achievable goal while keeping the car very responsive um, definitely going to keep the compression where it is it's at about 11 to 1 compression ratio which is very high but that's going to stay that will help with the spool of the turbo or the supercharger or more so the turbo uh, so I don't think the car will lag much at all I don't think we'll even have to go on the 85 maybe I'll see how we go I think 98 octane fuel will be enough for this setup so yeah 300 kilowatts is the aim I'll do that who knows when who knows when when I get around to it there's so many more things to do on the first but yeah that should be uh, pretty exciting I'm not gonna bother with NA trying to make power out of an NA engine it's just in my opinion an absolute waste of time I think it's already tuned very well by Honda what they've done is already a damn good job to pull out this much power in a small engine now changing extractors and this and that to actually try and make it a quick NA car is just a fucking waste of time it's a waste of money it costs so much money you're not going to get the power in return so best option turbo supercharger I don't know which one if I go turbo it'll probably a GTX uh, 3076R with a 0.82 rear housing I think that's probably the best size for this car it has huge power potential and it'll do about 300 kilowatts which is about 400 wheel horsepower at about 12 psi so that's very low psi obviously it's got to be low for the compression of the engine so you don't actually you know blow pistons and conrods out of the block uh, but the good thing is with the turbo there's always a bit of space there if I wanted to say make way more power you can just boost it up if the engine is capable of doing it so you can push it up to 20 25 psi and make 400 kilowatts who knows how much a ton a ton but it really depends how much this engine can take from what I'm hearing and reading online on forums and other people's experiences these engines can make a ton of power because they are forged from factory but it's not every single part in that you know the pistons are forged I'm pretty sure that the piss the conrods are not so they'll probably be a limitation there might have to change the head studs to ARP head studs or something like that if I start pushing big boost maybe they'll do the trick but you know one step at a time we'll see how it go and and just go from there you know so, see you guys that's that's what's gonna happen to the engine sooner or later when I get around to it because as I said there's a lot more to do on the car first I don't want to be putting a shitload of power down with shitty tires and so on so we'll do the outside first get the car looking a little bit better you know obviously give it a, a cut and polish and maybe paint correction and so on the only reason I am even considering putting coilovers on there is when you put the big wheels and they're sitting flush as you can see the tire is sitting inside there at the moment when you get the big wheels it's going to pretty much sit right there so the coilovers will stop the car from hitting the fenders if they're really close otherwise in my opinion the stock suspension is really good I wouldn't even change it. I'm not building a car for the drag strip or for the racetrack. I don't really care. I might take it to a racetrack here and there, but this is a street car. I'm building it for the street. So the more comfortable it is, while being quick and so on, the happier I am. I don't really want the stiffest car around and be uncomfortable and fucking go over speed bumps sideways. Fuck that shit, man. I'm over that shit. I want to try and actually drive this thing in a, you know, reasonably uh, practical way do you guys think I should go the supercharger route or should I slap on a big turbo tell me in the comments what your opinion is I don't know do you have a mate with an S2000 have you ever been in one that's been turbocharged or supercharged tell me about it because I would love to know the more info I get the better for me the more uh, the better choice I can make in the near future guys I'll leave it here I don't want to annoy you too much. I think this video is already long enough for me just talking. So if uh, you guys want to see more content like this, please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, definitely appreciate all the people that have and then like the video and comment. Uh, that's pretty damn awesome. 
And uh, yeah, guys, I'll see you in the next video very soon.